This is the Xiaomi Mi 9 SE and this is the Google Pixel 3a. I'm Ben from Authentech, how's it going? And today we'll be doing a camera comparison test between these two phones. The Mi 9 SE is currently on sale down to $330. The Pixel 3a is priced at $400. They are semi-closely priced and both have some awesome features, but I want to know which has the better camera setup. Huge thanks to Banggood for sending me the Mi 9 and thanks to Google for sending me the Pixel 3a. Check out my other Pixel 3a vids after this one and make sure you're following me on Instagram if not already. Now hit that thumbs up for YouTube's algorithm and let's jump right in. First things first, the Mi 9 has a triple rear lens setup. The Pixel has only a single lens, so it makes it slightly more complicated for comparisons, but still very interesting results. That 123 degree ultra wide angle on the Mi 9 is fantastic captures these wide landscapes and squeezing so much into camera frame. It shoots with great clarity and sharpness and the dynamic range still looks really nice too. The edges sometimes have a little softness to them but not too bad at all. Switching to the primary lens side by side versus the Pixel. The Mi sports a 48 megapixel Sony sensor and honestly producing some very surprising results. The HDR or high dynamic range is looking pretty awesome on both. There's very few phones out there that can compete with Google's magical HDR processing. Another thing to notice, it looks like the blacks are crushed a little bit more on the Pixel, more of a punchier contrast, while the Mi 9 allows you to see a little bit more detail in those shadow areas. Colors and saturation look really nice on both, pretty well balanced on each. Good white balance, and in some of these shots, the photos have some really good pop to them. In a few shots, the Pixel looks a little bit more saturated, but then other times, well, the Mi 9 takes over, so a bit of a tie there. Overall though, both sides looking really, really good in my opinion. In this shot, in the alleyway, looking at the sky, we can see the Pixel did a little bit better job of HDR processing there. On this building rooftop, the ultra wide angle shows just how much more content fits into camera frame. It's immersive and almost feels like you're there in the scene. Back to the standard angle and sharpness and clarity is maintained well. This photo shows the dark shadows again on the Pixel but really good HDR. And here looking at the stairs, two really small but telling areas we can zoom in on and see how the HDR is just slightly better exposed with those bright highlights on the Pixel in the hanging light and on the sun rays hitting the brick wall. Nonetheless, pretty close call. Check out this sweet building streetscape. The Mi 9's ultra wide lens squeezes the whole thing into one shot. Very cool perspective and great job exposing for those bright puffy clouds. In the side by side primary lens versus pixel, the photos look pretty similar with a little bit more details in the shadows on the Mi 9. Another wide angle shot, happy spring, and without taking a step forward, the primary lens comparison, both shots look good. I always love to do a little pixel peeping and zooming way in. I don't think I even turned on that 48 megapixel high res shot option on the Mi 9, yet the lettering on the building still looks a little bit more crisp and clean over the pixel. Here's a wide shot of the beautiful Huntsville landscape. And now here's a primary lens on both. We're slowly zooming into the rocket, see it way off in the distance and then jumping to the telephoto lens plus a digital zoom on the Mi 9 and then only digital zoom on the Pixel. Two key takeaways for me. First, very, very impressive on Pixel's part for maintaining such great clarity on one single lens with only digital zoom. However, secondly, there's just a little bit more clarity and detail, I'd say, on the Mi 9's 8 megapixel telephoto lens. Another ultra wide shot shooting right towards the sign and without stepping forward, primary lens shot on both, slightly warmer colors on the Mi, then punching in with optical zoom versus digital, and another very similar competing shot, which I'd be content with either. This one, I'd almost have to give it a straight tie. Too close to call. What do you guys think? Leave me your votes down in the comments. Here's a rear lens portrait shot, and even though the background blur is adjustable on both, by default, it's much stronger on the Pixel over the Mi. And that Pixel outlining is a little too aggressive for my taste. The Mi looks a little bit more natural fade off looking here. Switching to the front facing camera and snapping a few portrait shots. Even though I made sure studio lighting and beauty effects were turned off, oddly enough the Mi's shots were all turned out way overexposed and too bright. 
The blurring is pretty horrible and I'm not exactly sure why it can't snap a correct exposure, but in this test, the pixel clearly takes the win. Jumping to some low-ish light and dark photo samples, a few things I notice here. The sofa cushions and wood grains all look to have a little bit better detail on the pixel over the me. And now the pixel's known for having an awesome low light camera with Google's special night sight camera mode. The Mi 9 also has a night mode, which I made sure to switch on for balanced comparison. The Mi isn't horrible by any means in most of these shots. However, it's always fun and interesting when you place them side by side. And in these examples, we can see just how much more noise and grain than pixelation there is on the Mi, while the pixel is keeping a fairly clean, crisp, sharp photo, which is truly incredible for being handheld on a smartphone. And then just for fun, I zoomed way in on the telephoto lens and digital crop on both, and looking at the drastic differences of pixels between the two is pretty crazy. Now switching to some video tests. These are some of my favorite comparisons. Both cameras, max video res is 4K 30 FPS. Again, just to remember, this is the Mi 9 SE, which is the budget-friendly version of the flagship Mi 9, which has some slightly better camera specs and features. For example, it can shoot 4K 60. However, that Mi 9 is usually around five to $600, a couple hundred bucks more. For today's testing, the Mi 9 SE and the Pixel 3a are both the budget-friendly options of their flagship siblings. However, both capture some really impressive shots. First impressions here, I've mentioned this in previous videos. The pixels cropping in way too much in my opinion when recording 4K video. It's just too narrow of a field of view. The Mi sticking with a wider angle, which I really appreciate, and both have some popping HDR. The inside shadows are a bit dark on both, but the bright, vibrant skies through the windows here are well exposed with nice color balance. The Pixel looks a little bit more reddish hues, and the Mi has slightly greenish hues. We can also notice a bit more shake and wobble on the Mi over the Pixel, but we'll cover more on stabilization in just a minute. When I point up at the ceiling, interesting how much more noise gain is added to the Pixel, the Mi is keeping those dark levels a bit lower. When pointing at the trees, the clarity and sharpness in all those leaves, honestly, both look really nice and sharp. Colors on the Mi are a little bit more saturated, I think, overall, but still keeps a smooth and natural look, which I appreciate. Again, both cams have good white balance and dynamic range in video. This is an audio test on the Mi 9. How does the audio sound? And this is audio on the Pixel 3a. How does the audio sound? Audio test 1, 2, 3, 4. Audio test 1, 2, 3, 4. As for audio, both are too quiet in my opinion, no edits applied, both are doing an okay job with wind reduction, and they both sound very similar overall. When I try that stabilization test, I notice a few things. First, skin tones look a little bit more natural and realistic on the Mi. Also, we can notice how much tighter that pixel crops in on frame, though the pixel wins for stabilization, clearly, as the Mi is way too shaky. Maybe that EIS isn't even working in 4K, I'm not sure. I also understand that a lot of people record their home videos at simple 1080p, which is fine, and sometimes EIS works better there. However, for my testing, I like to push these cameras to the limits, see what their max capabilities are. In my opinion, optical or electronic image stabilization is one of the most important specs and features on any smartphone camera, and I like to see that video to be as smooth and stable as possible. If we pixel peep and zoom in 400% in this 4K video, it's pretty amazing to see the differences between the two. Much better clarity on the pixel. Also, if we look over at the docks and zoom in, the Mi doesn't seem to allow video recording on that telephoto lens. It's only digital zoom, just like the Pixel. Very interesting, and I'm not sure why. Switching to the ultra wide angle on the Mi and still recording in 4K 30, I love seeing how much wider lens this is over a single Pixel camera. Now, of course, Pixel still has better stabilization and flat natural colors and saturation. I love the versatility on the Mi's triple lens setup, and especially the fun uses and clever ways you can use that ultra-wide lens. Jumping to slow motion, the Pixel maxes out at 240 FPS 720p. The Mi 9 can match that, and here's a sample side by side. As for pixels, quality, and saturation, they all look pretty similar here. Nice smooth motion blur, good exposure, and focus on both. 
Now for one feature that the Mi has over the Pixel, it can shoot up to 960 frames per second. This is still at 720p. Now on a negative note, there definitely seems to be some motion interpolation going on and we can see it in the bird's wings, but if you don't really know what you're looking for or the background of the subject is clean and clear, some people won't even notice and it's super fun to play with. I really wish all phones supported 1000 frames per second by now, 240 FPS is so two years ago. As for the front facing video test, both are recording max 1080p. I believe the Pixel has infinity focus locked, while the Mi, I'm not certain, I couldn't find it online. And it looks to have a more shallow depth of field with its focus point, so that background has some nice blur to it. However, I don't think it has autofocus either because I couldn't get the background to come into focus. Both are blowing out some of those bright highlights, though flatter natural colors all around. I also noticed there's quite a bit of wobble on the Mi. When I step inside, both can't seem to handle the bright HDR from the windows too well, though the Pixel slightly wins. However, each is raising up the noise levels a bit, even more grain on the Pixel over the Mi. And last up, low light on those rear lenses. Unlike photos, both cams are keeping some nice details in the sofa cushions. We can notice the Mi has slightly warmer tones versus the Pixels keeping that LED lamp clean white as it is in real life. When aiming at the super dark wall, while the Mi has sharper details with more contrast, the Pixel is slightly washed out with softness and loud noise all around. Overall, which one do you guys prefer? Which camera do you think you're getting more bang for the buck? I always love it when each phone has its unique pros and cons, winning some tests but losing in others. If you could have either, which one would it be? Here's a few other impressions I have on the Mi 9 SE. There's a lot of things I enjoy, like the phone size, it fits perfectly in my hand. It's comfortable to hold, ergonomic, thin and premium feeling. It has this glossy glass finish on the back and I really like that ocean blue color, but it is definitely a fingerprint magnet. MIUI 10 has come so far since back in the day. I remember when I was rooting phones and flashing it over manually. That camera bump is, well, I like the in-screen fingerprint scanner, very slick, well-positioned, accurate, and fast. The screen features a Samsung AMOLED display, which is beautiful, bright, and vibrant, crisp and sharp. Has a small but minimal teardrop notch up top like the OnePlus, I like it. And lastly, this device I think is the Chinese version from Banggood, though they also sell the global version for a few bucks more. Make sure you do your research on the software, compliance, and phone bans within your country and networks. I'll give you all the links plus some coupon codes from Banggood down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.